In part one of this Nightwing training video, we discussed a leg training day that Dick Grayson might use in order to build more explosiveness, whether it's for running faster, jumping higher, kicking harder, or whatever else. We looked at using body weight moves, we looked at using compound lift, plyometric jumping type training, one-legged training, but when you think of Nightwing, you think of gymnastic strength, and when you think of gymnastic strength, you probably think about things like the Iron Cross, or the Maltese, or the Planche, and so in this video, we're going to discuss a push day and a pull day. We're going to look at how Nightwing might train his upper body in order to develop the kind of agility and power you need to be able to punch harder, climb over things, perform parkour, swing over beams, and just move around your opponents with ease. And in the next part, we're going to bring it all together with a core training day and mobility work. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the push-pull day for the Nightwing training program. So of course, if we're going to train our upper body strength just like Nightwing, then we want to start using calisthenics and gymnastics moves. Nightwing is an elite level gymnast. This is how he trains. We see it in the cartoons, the comics, the TV shows. And so that's obviously what we're going to emulate. Bodyweight training and calisthenics can be used like any other form of resistance training. You can combine it with a weightlifting program, for instance, in order to encourage hypertrophy and general strength. You can use simple moves like the press up, the pull up, then use these in uh, drop sets and mechanical drop sets in order to stimulate growth. However, that's not what's really interesting about gymnastic strength training. There's a few aspects of this kind of training that tap into types of strength that are missing from other forms of training. In particular, the first one I want to focus on is straight arm strength. As the name suggests, this is the ability to exert force with straight arms, and that means the ability to pull off moves like the planche, like the Maltese, like the front lever, where your arms are straight, holding onto a bar or the ground, and then you move your body around that. If you haven't trained for straight arm strength before, you're gonna find this remarkably difficult. Once you have developed this kind of strength, though, you'll find it really does transfer into all kinds of other forms of training. In fact, many people who manage to achieve the planche find that it also massively improves their bench press. Apparently, some people who've never done a bench press before, but have managed to pull off planche, will then be able to bench press twice their body weight simply because they developed such power and stability in those muscles. Before you begin with this kind of training though, it's really important that you first build up a basic level of strength and particularly in your tendons. Tendons get a lower blood supply than muscle, therefore they respond less quickly to training and they're more likely to get injured if you push them too hard. If your muscle runs ahead of your tendons, then you're looking at trouble. Studies suggest that muscles will respond to training in as little as eight days, whereas it can take up to two months for your tendons to do the same thing. Tendons also take longer to recover from workouts, but the good news is that you keep tendon strength for longer than you keep muscle strength. You perform a straight arm move, all of that pressure is going through the bicep, which is elongated, and through the tendons. This builds massive biceps, that's why uh, gymnasts have such big biceps, but it's also really strenuous on the tendons. That's why it's so important that you build those and build that basic level of resilience first, especially if you're new to this kind of training. You're also going to want to work on your shoulder mobility, but we'll talk about that more in the next part of this series. So for this reason, before you begin those advanced level straight arm moves, you should first just build up that basic tolerance and strength in the tendons. You can do this with a number of different moves. For instance, you can use rings turned out push-ups. That means using gymnastics rings with your palms facing forwards, supinated, and perform push-ups that way. Likewise, you can do it by using the perfect push-up, which twists the arm as you go up and down, using pseudo planche push-ups. You can find illustrations of all this online very easily, or by using the supinated support hold on the rings, where you just literally hold yourself in an upright position with straight arms, again, palms facing forwards on gymnastics rings. This is harder than it looks. Practice with that, train lightly in calisthenics for about two months, and then you can begin to start adding in those progressions. And from there, that's how you start to build up that strength you need for those isometric holds. So you might start with a crow pose, just balancing on your hands with your knees tucked up by your elbows. Then you might move on to the crane pose, then the tuck planche, then the one-legged tuck planche, then the straddle planche where your legs are wide apart, thereby spreading the weight and bringing your center of gravity closer to the point of contact, and then the full planche, which is obviously what we're going for. These are all isometric holds unless you add a press. So you're gonna try and build up to about a minute of hold before you then begin to incorporate the next level up. With movements like handstand presses, for instance, or perhaps like typewriter pull-ups, you might attempt to do a certain number of repetitions before you then add in the next progression up. You can then still keep using that easier progression as part of your training, but just begin those sessions with the hardest version of that move. Progressions generally get harder and harder, and they do this in many different ways, either by isolating 
one muscle group so that one muscle is taking more of the weight or by lengthening the lever arm, thereby moving the center of gravity away from you, essentially meaning you have to apply more pressure. This is how we kind of fake increasing the amount of weight that we're using. And the easiest way to demonstrate this is with a chair, obviously. So if I want to lift this chair, then I might hold it here, see, near to the center of gravity. That's relatively easy, but now, if I move the grip to here, suddenly it becomes a lot more difficult because now the center of gravity is further away uh, from the point of contact. If you want to find the progressions, the easiest way to do that is to look online and just search for planche progressions or Maltese progressions or front lever progressions. And then you'll see a list of moves you can use. And then you just start with the easiest one. And like I say, once you've mastered that, move on to the next one, aiming for about a minute hold. Another option for getting some of these calisthenics moves is something called supra maximal training. What that basically means is that you're finding a way to perform a move that you can't normally, normally by cheating in some way with some kind of assist. So for instance, you might place your feet lightly on a surface such as a chair when performing planche, or you might use a little bit of momentum, swing yourself up into the planche position on parallel bars and then lower yourself again. So these exercises are incredibly technical. They're very hard on the central nervous system. So we should treat them like we would treat compound lifts in the gym. They go at the start of the session and then we follow them up with easier exercises. In this case, that might mean the easier progressions. At the same time, you can use all of that regular calisthenics work, explosive movements like the muscle up or like clapping press ups in order to build explosive starting strength, as well as regular movements like press ups and press up variations such as archer push ups, for instance dips, ring dips. So the way that you use these bodyweight exercises, the way that you create the mechanical drop set is to start with a difficult move and then drop down to a slightly easier move that targets the exact same muscle. So for instance, you might perform as many dips as you can do, then you might perform as many assisted dips as you can do, then you might do press ups and then you might do knee press ups. So by doing this, you're doing all movements that target the pecs and the triceps but you're allowing yourself to go past failure, thereby building up a lot of metabolic stress and muscle damage, just as you can do as a bodybuilder with weights. This is what I think is missing from a lot of basic bodyweight training programs designed for building muscle size and strength is intensity. I think that if we're trying to build a night wing program, then breaking these up into a push day and a pull day, so one day of push movements, and one day of pull ups and things like that, makes a lot of sense because it allows us to be more intense on that one body part while at the same time treating our body in a compound holistic way rather than just isolating specific muscle groups like the bicep. And don't assume that there's no value to doing bent arm movements, things like the bent arm planche, things like planche presses. These are all really great ways to train your pecs and generally the stronger you get in calisthenics and the greater your control over your body, the easier you're going to find making difficult workouts because you've got more moves in your repertoire, more difficult moves, you'll find it easier to give yourself a great workout wherever you are without equipment. Other great moves you can incorporate into a body weight training day include rope climbs. Rope climbs are fantastic for building bicep strength. As I've talked about before, they're a concentric only form of exercise, so they don't cause much muscle fatigue and they're brilliant for the grip. You'll build fantastic grip by doing rope climbs. Another great thing to incorporate is rock climbing or bouldering. If you have a rock climbing wall near you, use it it's fantastic for your strength to weight ratio makes you really explosive and dynamic at the same time it's really great for muscle endurance because you'll be holding yourself in position whilst you look for that next crag to grab brilliant for building grip strength it's just all round the perfect addition to a calisthenics workout in general there's lots of different equipment that you should invest in if you want to have a proper calisthenics workout at home i made a video in the past on building a home gym for calisthenics but just to go over a few of the basics once again Parallel bars are brilliant for dips, for things like handstand press-ups, for things like things like V-sits, L-sits. At the same time, you have parallettes are lower to the ground. They're perhaps even better for things like planche. They're also smaller and easier to transport. They're also very cheap. All these things are very cheap. A pull-up bar, of course, is essential for pulling movements. And then I do recommend getting a rope, as I've talked about in the past. Gymnastic rings are a fantastic purchase. Whenever you perform a push-up on gymnastics rings, you need to stabilize yourself using lots of supportive muscles. And this builds a lot of strength as well as a lot of um, proprioception and body control. They're also really cheap and I highly recommend getting gymnastics rings which are far more versatile over something like TRX which costs the earth and doesn't do anything that gymnastics rings 
can't. Finally, on top of all that, we're also going to incorporate a little bit of weightlifting because our boy Dicky, he does often use big weights. You see him in a lot of comics throwing around barbells. It makes a lot of sense for us to combine our straight arm work and our pulling work with things like rows, with things like military press. As we talked about in the past, you need to use 90% of your one rep max in order to really recruit the fastest twitch muscle fibers and build pure power. However, we're going to go a little bit lighter because we're using it in conjunction with calisthenics and difficult progressions. And so we're going to do that just after with a slightly lighter weight and we're going to pump it out for eight to 10 reps. Alternatively, you can use much higher um, weights and put them at the start of your workout and alternate between that and your progressions. Depends on how you want to progress. Finally, it's really important to build your grip strength. This is another key component of gymnastic strength training and calisthenics and something that often goes overlooked. Basically, your grip is what connects you to the bar or to the ground and it's one of the most important links in the whole chain. If you have a weak grip, you won't be able to perform something like hangs, you won't be able to perform something like um, planche or Maltese because too much energy is gonna be involved in trying to hold on to the bar or the floor. Even with something like a handstand, you're gonna be gripping the ground with your fingers and that actually makes a big difference to how well you can balance and to the amount of energy you exert whilst you're up there. Likewise, if you're struggling to balance with the handstand press, particularly the straight arm handstand press, which is very challenging, then try putting the weight more onto this part of the hand rather than the heel and you'll find that it's a little bit easier not to topple over and really grip into the ground at the same time. Again, this is an example of how something that isn't obviously a grip related exercise actually involves the hands and the grip more than you might think. I made a whole video on grip strength training as I always tend to say, so check that out if you want more on that. To build our grip, we can use the rope climbs that we're already using. Hangs are really good also for mobility, so just hang from the bar for as long as you can but at the same time, you can also supplement this with light weights. So for instance, wrist curls and pronated wrist curls, and at the same time, overcoming isometrics. So that means squeezing a grip trainer, it means trying to bend an iron bar, something where you're exerting maximum force against something that doesn't want to move. When you do this, you recruit all of your muscle fibers at once, and this is one of the only opportunities we have to attempt to one rep max with our grip training. So it's something that I really recommend you do incorporate into this kind of routine. If you do parkour, you'll notice a big difference next time you do a wall mount once you've trained your grip. Being able to hold on tight makes a huge difference. And to demonstrate how important this is in gymnastics, when you grab onto the rings, you might want to use something called a false grip. This means that your wrist is gonna be at the same height as the bar or the ring. And by doing that, you make it easier to transition smoothly into a muscle up without needing momentum. So it makes a huge difference. And that's essentially a wrist curl. So build that forearm strength and build that grip strength will make a huge difference to your agility and your ability to move. So to summarize, we're gonna be focusing on progressions and straight arm strength and building towards some really cool gymnastics moves. We're gonna start our training routine with those. From there, we're gonna add in some lighter compound lifts and weights. Then from there, we're gonna be using rope climbs and mechanical drop sets and circuits in order to train our bodies for muscle size, strength, using regular calisthenics and various different variations, explosive movements, slower movements, slow eccentrics, etc. All of that's gonna be in the Nightwing training program. Of course, over at the website, you can find a full push day where I incorporate some of these progressions as well as other exercises that you can use in order to stimulate hypertrophy, muscle endurance, etc. And there's a little bit more extra over at the Patreon as well as there will be for all these videos in this series. So head over there if you want the full scoop. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like, share it around, comment down below, and let me know if I missed anything or what you would add to a Nightwing training program. Like I say, next time I return to this topic, I'll be talking about the core strength and mobility, but I've got a lot of other things I want to cover in the meantime, starting with assassin training and programming. So if that sounds good, then please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks a ton for watching and bye for now.